Hello, breaking brain and here I am again. Do you know what psychological safety means? To my mind, we don't know how we do it. And today, it's my next topic. Creating psychological safety in the workplace for learning, innovation and growth. The Fearless Organizations by Amy C. Edmondson. Psychological safety is broadly defined as a climate in which people are comfortable expressing and being themselves. More specifically, when people have psychological safety at work, they feel comfortable sharing concerns and mistakes without fear or embarrassment or retribution. They are confident that they can speak up and won't be humiliated, ignored or blamed. They know they can ask questions when they are unsure about something. They tend to trust and respect their colleagues. When a work environmental has reasonably high psychological safety, good things happen. Mistakes are reported quickly so that prompt corrective action can be taken. Seamless coordination across groups or departments is enabled and potentially game-changing ideas for innovation are shared. In short, psychological safety is a crucial source of value creation in organization operating in a complex, changing environmental. Your greatest fear as a CEO is that people aren't telling you the truth. Mark Costa. The greatest enemy of learning is knowing. John Maxwell. Are you ready for a psychological safety? Let's begin. Contrary to what many leaders believed in the past, fear is not an effective motivator. And this is doubly true today when most jobs require people to learn, improve and collaborate almost constantly. Due to fear, consciously or not, people often inhibit themselves from sharing their ideas questions and concerns. And when people don't speak up, the organization's ability to innovate and grow is threatened. So, that they can stop being silent, a psychological safe climate must be cultivated. However, bear in mind that psychological safety is not about being nice. Conflict would and should in naivety arise, no matter how perfect the work environment is. Psychological safety is about being honest and about letting people on different sides of a conflict express their opinions. But remember, no hate. Psychological safety is not a personality factor. Work climate affects different people in similar ways regardless of whether they are introverts or extroverts, most workers will speak their mind up in a psychological safe environment. Psychological safety is not just another word for trust. Though similar concept, the key difference between trust and psychological safety is that the latter is not experienced at personal, but at a group level. In addition, as Edmondson says, trust is about giving others the benefit of the doubt and psychological safety relates to whether others will give you the benefit of the doubt when, for instance, you have asked for help or admitted a mistake. Psychological safety is not about lowering performance standards. Psychological safety is not about being comfortable at work or about creating anything goes environment. As the pictures demonstrate, it's about quite the opposite. Like you see, high psychological safety and low standards, it's comfort zone. Hmm, it's not for us. Low psychological safety and low standards, it's worst apathy zone. Low psychological safety and high standards. It's anxiety zone. Ugh. 
and high psychological safety and high standards. It's learning and high performance zone. Yeah, I think it's quite good. In the first chapter, Edmondson digs into a few cases in which workplace fear allowed an illusion of business success, postponing inevitable discoveries of underlying problems that had gone unreported and unaddressed for a period of time. The chapter covers the rise and the miss of a few iconic companies – Volkswagen, Nokia, Wells Fargo, or Golden Sachs, led and managed by way of fear. The main takeaways from this chapter are If you are a leader and you only want to hear good news, you create fear which blocks you from learning the truth until it's too late. Consequently, a lack of psychological safety only creates an illusion of success which in the long run can turn into serious business failure. A psychological safe environment is not that fragile since shortcomings become known early and the size and the impact of the future failure can nearly always be mitigated. The fourth chapter starts where the third leaves off and highlights workplaces where employees, customers or communities suffered avoidable physical or emotional harm because employees living in a culture of fear were reluctant to speak up, ask questions or get help. A culture of silence is a dangerous culture, was and Monson, demonstrating how is many places, hospitals or nuclear reactors, do you remember Chernobyl? Not creating a psychological safe environment is not a luxury one has, because it can lead to a tragic loss of life. Excessive confidence in authority is a risk factor in psychological and physical safety, concludes Edmondson, advising leaders to be more open to criticism and willing to learn from their subordinates. Chapter 5 the fearless workplace. The three crucial takeaways from chapter 5. If the employees are encouraged to be honest, the company is more creative and more innovative. If you are a leader, be willing to say I don't know when you don't have an answer. These three simple words are so powerful in engaging the hearts and minds of employees that without too much exaggeration can be described as the basis of a psychological safe environment. All in all, creating an environment that values employees' yields benefits in engagement, problem solving and performance. Key lessons from the fearless organizations At first, psychological safety is all about being an employee comfortable expressing yourself. Working for a company where you cannot express yourself and you are in constant fear that the things you'd say may be met with ridicule and contents is not only bad for you, it's bad for the company as well. Second, psychological safety is not about lowering performance standards. Edmondson says that creating a psychological safe environment doesn't mean creating a comfort zone, it means replacing the anxiety zone for a learning and high performance zone, where ideas are constantly pitted against each other and creativity blooms out of conflict. The leader's tools kit for building psychological safety. In essence, the leader's tool kit is a three-step blueprint which aims to structure the actions and activities of someone who is in charge of a company with the final goal of creating a fearless psychological safe organization. First, a leader must set the stage by framing the work, setting the expectations and clarifying the need for voice, and emphasizing the purpose 
identifying what's at stake, why it matters and for whom, so that later accomplishes an atmosphere of shared expectations and meaning. Next, a leader must invite participations by demonstrating situational humility, admitting gaps, practicing inquiry, asking good questions, and setting up structures and processes, creating forums and providing guidelines for discussion. This results in confidence in the employees that every voice is welcome and sets the stage for the final step, responding productively. This encompasses expressing appreciation, destigmatization, failure and sanctioning clear violations, which in turn should achieve company-wide orientation toward continuous learning. Is the difference between playing not to lose and playing to win. Playing not to lose is a mindset that focuses, consciously or not, on protecting against the downside. Playing to win, in contrast, is focused on the upside, seeks opportunity and necessarily takes risk. When we are playing not to lose, we play it safe. Stop to consider which mindset is in charge when you are at work? How often do you find yourself truly playing to win? Right now, tell us, are you going to measure psychological safety? Yes or no? It's only seven questions. If you make a mistake on this team, it's often held against you. Members of this team are able to bring up problems and though issues. People on this team sometimes reject others for being different. It's safe to take a risk on this team. It's difficult to ask other members of this team for help. No one on this team would deliberately act in a way that undermines my efforts. Working with members of this team, my unique skills and talents are valued and utilized. And right now? How many times your answer isn't correct? Thank you so much, take care and stay safe.